All right, American Art Seminar students, uh, let's talk a little bit about the leader of the people. Um, I'll just start by saying I, I love John Steinbeck. Uh, John Steinbeck is my favorite American author. He's, uh, you know, he shares the distinction of my favorite author with uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, who was from England. And uh, I, I don't think there's anyone who is a better voice for what America is, uh, particularly in this, uh, in, in the 20th century than John Steinbeck. And um, Perhaps I'll end up talking more about him as an author later, uh, but this talk will just be about the leader of the people. I don't have an organized plan here about what to talk about. I just want to walk through the short story with you and maybe give you some of my uh, feedback or, or things that I've noticed a, as I read this. Um, one thing you need to know about John Steinbeck is uh, he is a fierce proponent of the working class. Uh, he is a voice for the voiceless. Uh, John Steinbeck, during the Great Depression, went and, and physically lived in these migrant labor camps where, where people were dying and starving uh, so that he could be their voice. Uh, I've, I've read letters and interviews and, and all that from, from him, and, and he is a major champion for the working class. And you see that here with uh, Billy Buck. Uh, this ranch hand, uh, this, I, I'm not sure I'd say servant, but, but someone who certainly does not own his own land, is, is not upper class, he is a great picture of honor, of respect, of doing things the right way. Steinbeck clearly has regard for this character, and, and you see his ability to read multiple generations here. He knows how to handle Jody. He knows how to handle uh, Carl, and he definitely knows how to handle the grandfather. So the wisdom to see three different generations of people and know how to approach those and approach them all with honor and to give them the words and the space that they need. Uh, Billy Buck is a great character who understands this code of conduct for himself. Um, he's a far better character than Carl. Um, where Carl, it's important to him to give permission. Uh, that's a point made on the first page of the short story. Uh, Carl gives permission. Billy gives advice. Uh, he is he is not there to talk down to to Jody, the young boy. He's there to, in some ways, bring him along. Carl does almost nothing to raise up Jody to teach him how to be a man. Um, partly because Carl isn't quite sure how to do that either. Um, but Billy, um, Billy's there, and and he's willing to raise up Jody in a certain way to give him uh, advice. And so he's a very honorable character, and you see that throughout the story. Uh, Jody's an interesting character too in that uh, you see him in many places uh, both childish and trying to appear mature. You know he's, he has this mature profanity on page 2274 trying to test that out to test out what it means to be a man to to swear. Um, he's got the once the maturity of a battle to fight and the childishness of that battle being against you know a, a bunch of helpless mice uh, you see him skipping and, and childishly to go see the grandfather um, and then as soon as he's within sight of the grandfather he he wants to walk with maturity um, and so he's he's stuck in this in-between stage um, there is a important statement about jody that that is foreshadowing um, carl and, and and the mother mrs tiflin are talking and mrs tiflin uh, says he hasn't enough to keep him busy. Uh, this is foreshadowing. Jody doesn't have enough to keep him busy. Jody doesn't have enough purpose, nor does he have a life of purpose ahead of him. Uh, this story seems to be pointing to the idea that, that a life of purpose, a life of something to conquer, uh, that was the grandfather's life. And the fear is that that, that is no longer um, around. Um, so we move to page 2275. You get this description of the grandfather uh, from the, the Mrs. Tiflin's eyes, or his daughter. And, and it's a very soft description. Look at it this way, Carl. That was the big thing in my father's life. He led a wagon train clear across the plains to the coast, and when it was finished, his life was done. It was a big thing to do, but it didn't last long enough. Later on, if there had been any farther west to go, he'd have gone. Well, the bottom line is his father, or I'm sorry, her father did have something big in his life. He had something, he had a purpose, he had something worth doing, something that was dangerous. 
Uh, he had a, a group to lead, a job to do, and it meant everything to him. And without that purpose, uh, he now is left to try to pass down that idea of purpose to other generations. And you see Carl certainly unwilling to want or hear uh, that message. As we move through the short story then, um, the mouse hunt is, is not a nothing, uh, it matters. You need to see the mouse hunt next to what the grandfather did. And, and Steinbeck goes ahead and closely compares these for you. So you know that that sort of thing matters. Um, Jody's generation, and again, this isn't just one child and one grandfather. This is Steinbeck saying this about the American character. One generation had a grand goal, had a purpose. This idea of westering, of, of conquering, of doing something big and difficult and dangerous and sacrificial, they did it. They had something they thought was necessary. They had big goals and big dreams, and they had a battle to fight. And so they went and did it. Two generations later, now that the land is conquered, what battle is there for the next generation to fight? nothing but a bunch of harmless mice and so yes it shows some of jody's immaturity which is appropriate because he's a kid but it also shows the movement in america uh, from purposeful work from big grand dreams and this exploring and going out and doing this american spirit of of adventure uh, and and how that's been tamed down by comfort and security and, and just a lack of a battle to fight. Uh, and so this mouse hunt, uh, Jody says it on page 2277. Uh, he's talking with the grandfather at the top. The grandfather says, have the people of this generation come down to hunting mice? They are very strong. And Jody says, uh, couldn't say anything more true. No, sir, it's just play. All he can do is play as if he has a battle to fight play as if there's this upcoming purpose in his life. In learning how to be a, a man and learning how to be an American, uh, he wants something to conquer. And at this point, there, there just isn't something for him to conquer. Uh, Steinbeck has a lot of writing, and, and I think some of the essays I'll share with you later in the week uh, will include this, but has a lot to say about once Americans lost a desperation, once they lost the need, the need of the Puritans to build something from nothing, the, the need of this Western group to, to go and conquer the land. Um, once we got a lack of need, got some comfort, we started to become lost a little bit. Uh, and you see that here. Um, very moving paragraph on 2278. The grandfather is, is talking about his time. He says, that was the time for the leader. I was the leader. I kept my eyes open. I had something to do. I had something that mattered in my life, that mattered to a great number of, of people. Um, see more of that on 2280. Um, at Towards the top, Jody lay in his bed and thought of the impossible world of Indians and of buffaloes, a world that had ceased to be forever. He wished that he could have been living in the heroic time, but he knew he was not of heroic timber. Again, Steinbeck commenting on generations in America, not just this character. No one living now, save possibly Billy Buck, was worthy to do the things that had been done. A race of giants have lived then, fearless men, men of staunchness unknown in this day. And Carl says it later on the next page, that time's done, it's finished. Why can't he forget it? That's more of an uh, indictment on Carl than it is on the grandfather. That time's done, that time of acts of bravery, of acts of purpose. Um, the, grandma, uh, the grandfather talks more about it on 2282 uh, on, on, at the end of the short story. It wasn't Indians that were important, nor adventures, nor even getting out here. 
It was a whole bunch of people made into one big crawling beast. And I was the head. It was Americans in something together. And he was helping to lead it. He had a role to play in something far grander than just his own. Uh, it wasn't just his comfort on the line. It wasn't just his desires. It was all of America in it together. And he was the, he was the leader. Uh, it was the movement. It was Westering. He, he had a purpose. He had a battle to fight. He had something that mattered. Um, we carried life out here and set it down the way those ants carry eggs, and I was the leader. The westering was as big as God, and the slow steps that made the movement piled up and piled up until the continent was crossed. And he says, there's no place to go now. There's the ocean to stop you. Westering has died out of the people. Westering isn't a hunger anymore. It's all done. And Steinbeck is saying what is done is this hunger, this passion, this ability to do something as this great mass of people. Um, or at least Steinbeck wants to poke Americans into asking, are we capable of this anymore? Um, when you don't have this great need, when you don't have a great purpose in front of you, you get lost, you wander. Uh, and in America, you get very focused on self and comfort and luxury um, rather than purpose. And, and I, I know Steinbeck would argue uh, much to your dismay. You will not have the joy uh, chasing those things as opposed to chasing purpose. It's a major theme in a lot of his works. Um, I've read just about every letter he's ever written. He writes about that all the time. He lived that. Uh, man, he was him hitting it big with the mice and men, him getting money, made him miserable. He thought life was so much better when he was scraping by. He didn't turn the money away. He certainly lived with it and it allowed him to do a lot of things that helped him later in his career. But there were some major issues with that. And, and when he didn't have a purpose, um, when he didn't have a book to write that he thought was going to change America, when he didn't have the lower class, the working class to write about and fight for, in his life, he wandered. Anytime he was purposeless, he wasn't happy. This is a great story of, of two generations, three generations really, um, trying to find purpose or not trying to find it um, and seeing the consequences of that. Um, so that's just a quick flyby of the text. I, I would love to know what stood out to you from it. I hope you've written about it. I hope you've read it. And I hope that my comments have helped you see into the short story a little bit.